Hey everybody, Mr. Chantry here, your Neighborhood Planetarium Director, with a special March edition of Evening Sky Excursions, where I show you what to see in the nighttime sky. Now, a lot of us are stuck at home. Uh, things are being canceled by the minute of activities to do, things to do. One of the great things you can still do, uh, where you don't have to be in close contact with people, is go outside and look at the nighttime sky. I'm posting this video on March 13th, Friday the 13th. It's supposed to be partly cloudy tonight, a lot of what I'll show you tonight. You'll still probably be able to see in the nighttime sky. I plan on taking my telescopes out uh, into the field across the street from my house tonight. And Sunday night, it's supposed to be nice and clear, um, lots of things visible. So the first part of the uh, the, the screen uh, cast here, I'll show you some of the tools that I use and some of the easy constellations that you can find in your sky with younger kids. They can go out, they can find these shapes in the sky and look for them really easily. Second part of the video is it gets a little bit deeper into it. I'll show you if you have a pair of binoculars at home. They don't have to be special binoculars, just any kind of binoculars. Things that you can try to look for, challenge yourself. A uh, good way to kill a few hours at night as it gets dark. Something to do that still keeps your mind stimulated. So uh, what I'll be using tonight is a software called Stellarium, uh, which is here. It's a free download, stellarium.org. Um, it's very similar to the software that I use in the planetarium and can be really useful for finding different things in the sky. Not too much of a learning curve uh, on it. Lots of videos on how to use it, things like that. Another thing that you might use is something called skymaps.com. Produce monthly star maps. You get a website here and you click on the download the latest star map and you'll get a star map that comes up that looks like this. This circle represents the sky. It shows you all the different constellations and the brighter stars that you'd be able in the sky and some things to look for. So really easy resource, free online. You can print them out. You can use them uh, from your screen here. Now, if you're going to go outside and look at the nighttime sky, it's always good to get your eyes adjusted. Uh, so you'll have to be outside in the dark for a good half hour before your eyes get fully adjusted uh, to be able to see a lot of the fainter stars. But um, pretty easy to do. So let me bring up the nighttime sky here. We'll get, we'll get rid of these and we'll take a look at our nighttime sky. So here's what the sky will look like just about 615. It'll still be bright. Uh, you might want to look outside at about 615 to see where the sun is going down. That'll indicate where the west is. So that direction of where the sun is, that's west. So if you turn to your left, that's south. And if you turn to your right, that's north. Helps you get your directions uh, and bearing and things like that. By about 7.15, you might start to notice just about halfway up in the sky um, between the horizon and directly over center. Uh, as the sun's going down over there in the west, what looks like a bright star showing up, that's actually the planet Venus. Uh, so you can look for that. It, it stands out. It's much brighter than anything else in the sky. So that's the planet Venus there. If uh, Let me see if I can get it centered here. If you happen to have binoculars or a small telescope, uh, if you look at Venus, if you can get close enough to it, some, some uh, binoculars might be able to see this, maybe more like a small telescope. You'll see that it's actually a half Venus. Venus goes through phases, just like the moon, because Venus is in between us and the sun. So we see different parts of its daytime side um, as it goes around us. So it's, it's only about a half of Venus right now, but still very, very bright up there in the sky. So I'm going to back back out so we can see. There we go. I'll deselect that. So that's at about 7.15. You'll be able to start seeing that. Um, it'll take until about 8.15 for the skies to be dark enough to see a lot of the stars that'll be out tonight. So here's the sky um, looking south at about 8.15. If you look to the south, so remember we saw that sunset where the sun was setting, that was the west, and we turn to the left, and that's going to be the south there. So we're looking south. And one of the brightest stars that you'll see there, still not as bright as Venus, but a very bright star that's Sirius, also known as the dog star. And that marks out the first easy shape that you can have kids find. Uh, it's called the winter triangle. So it's that star Sirius, which will be really bright down there, up to this reddish looking star Betelgeuse, and over to this star Procyon. This is what we call the winter triangle. And it just marks out some bright stars in our, in our winter skies. So Sirius is also known as the dog star because the constellation that it's attached to is a dog. It doesn't look very much like a dog. It's kind of this upside down Y shape that we see right down here. This is uh, Sirius the, do uh, the dog Canis Major, which means the big dog. 
Betelgeuse is part of the probably the most famous winter constellation, Orion, right here. It's one of the corners of kind of a big rectangle here in the sky. The opposite star of it, Rigel, is pretty bright too. And right in the middle, you see what's known as Orion's Belt, uh, which are these three bright stars that are almost in a perfectly straight line. They stand out in the sky really, really easily. So Orion is really easy to pick out. Betelgeuse has been in the news a lot lately, um, starting back in the fall. It was uh, in the news because it was getting dimmer and dimmer than it had ever been before. Um, we do know, based on the light that comes from the star and the measurements that we can do, um, that it is a very old star and it should explode sometime soon. Um, but soon in astronomy means probably sometime in the next 100,000 years. Could be tomorrow night, could be 100,000 years from now. So uh, it wasn't, it, it has started to get brighter again. And there's probably some other scientific explanation like um, dust in between us or a large uh, sunspot on this star uh, that made it go dimmer than we had ever seen it before. So not we really like to see a, a star like this in the sky go supernova and it would light up and it would be really great for science, but probably not anytime soon. And then the third star here, Procyon. Uh, makes up this winter triangle here. So really easy to find. Once you find the triangle, you can go for a bigger shape, like a six-sided shape, like a hexagon. If we back out here a little bit, the triangle is one corner of what we call the winter hexagon. Now, Procyon and Sirius, these stars of the winter triangle, are part of the hexagon, and Betelgeuse is going to be kind of in the middle. So it goes from Procyon here to Sirius to Rigel in the bottom of Betelgeuse, uh, or of Orion the Hunter here up to this star called Aldebaran. It's the eye of Taurus the bull. You can see this V shape of stars here. So you can look for that V shape of Taurus the bull. All the way up to this star, Capella. Capella will be almost directly overhead at about 815, pretty bright. And over to Castor and Pollux here, which are the twins that make up Gemini and back to Procyon. So it does make kind of this big, um, not evenly spaced, but six-sided figure here in the sky that we call the winter hexagon, and it marks out six different constellations. So you have the big dog Canis Major down here, this upside down Y. You have Orion the Hunter right here with his belt. Taurus the Bull, which is this V shape and comes up to uh, here. These would be the points of his horns here. Capella is the brightest star in a constellation called Auriga, who is the goat herder. It's kind of this hexagon right here. You might be able to see, depending on the light pollution, this little triangle of stars. These are called the kid stars because um, Auriga is a goat herder. He's holding three baby goats, and baby goats are called kids. So we call those the kid stars. And then over to Pollux and Castor here, the twins of Gemini. And if I bring up the, the lines that make up all the constellations in the sky and put the, the lines here, so that hexagon marks out these six really prominent winter constellations that you can see. The dogs, uh, Canis Major, Orion the Hunter, Taurus the Bull, Auriga, Gemini, Canis Minor, the little dog that's really just a, a little line here. So those are really easy to find here in the sky when you're, when you're looking uh, south at about 815. You might also notice to see over here in the east coming up uh, Leo the Lion, which is one of our springtime constellations. It's marked out by this backwards question mark, or what we call a sickle shape in the sky, and this really bright star down here. We'll talk about the, this constellation a little bit more when we talk about uh, things that you can find with binoculars and telescopes. Um, now, if we look towards the north, so right now we're facing the south, so you can turn either 180 degrees to your right or your left. We can look to the north a little bit. I'll turn to my right here. As we're looking north, some things that you might be able to find. The Big Dipper will look like a question mark here in the sky, just to the right of the north. Um, so almost if you're facing that winter triangle, just turn directly around. And you should see the Big Dipper here, which is part of a bigger constellation called Ursa Major. And so this is the handle of the Dipper, and this is the cup. These two stars here are called the Pointer Stars, because they help point us towards the North Star. So if you draw this imaginary line between these two stars and keep going, the next bright star you come to, that's the North Star. So the North Star is important, not because it's bright, and it's not actually a particularly bright star. It's always at this position in the sky because it happens to be 
directly above the Earth's North Pole. So as the Earth rotates and spins around, that star looks like it doesn't move at all in the sky. It stays at the same spot. So you use these two stars in the Big Dipper to go across and find that North Star. If you keep that line going about the same distance to the other side, you can come to this M shape or W shape or three shape here in the sky or E shape. And depending on the orientation of it, this is the constellation Cassiopeia and pretty easy to point out here in the sky. So those are just some basic constellations that you can find. You can use those star maps um, from starmaps.com to easily find a lot of those. Um, most of the other ones are going to be uh, kind of hard to, to find. Those are some of the easiest ones with some of the brightest stars. Now, if you're looking for a challenge for yourself or, or students um, and you have a pair of binoculars, I'll show you a couple things that you can try to find. Astronomers, we use these constellations um, as kind of a roadmap of the sky to where to point our binoculars and telescopes and things like that. So we'll start here um, in this, this winter hexagon area right here. So this was the big winter hexagon area. Easiest thing to see in the sky um, is in Orion the Hunter. So you find that winter triangle. Orion is right here and you can find his belt. Um, if you take your binoculars and you look just below his belt, there's something called the Orion Nebula. Now, um, we mark these out with catalogs of different things. It's named in the catalogs M42. So I'll bring up the catalog here and search for M42. And let's take a look. There's M42. And if we zoom in on it with a pair of binoculars, you'll be able to see the three stars probably about at this magnification, um, you'll start to notice that some of these stars look a little bit blurry or fuzzy. And as we go in a little bit more, maybe with um, a small telescope, you might have an image more like this. What you're looking at is a giant cloud of dust and gas where stars are born. This is the closest star forming region um, to the planet Earth. Uh, it's about 1,500 light years away, um, and this is where stars are born. This is a giant cloud. You could fit billions of our solar system inside this cloud, so it's, it's a really, really large cloud, about 24 light years across, um, but it's so far away. We can see it in a pair of binoculars, and if you have a really powerful telescope, you can get in, and you might even start to see a little bit of the colors in there. It won't turn up. This is an image from the Hubble Space Telescope, so it's not going to turn out like this, but in a pretty high power telescope, you might see little hints of blue and discoloration in here as you're you're looking at it and things like that. So that's probably the easiest one. You can see it with binoculars. It'll look like a little fuzzy patch in the sky, probably something like this. And then with the telescope, it'll look um, a little bit better. So that's probably the easiest one to find um, that's in directly under Orion's belt. Uh, the second one has a, a pretty good star marker next to it, but it's a pretty dim object. So if we go from Orion's belt, if you draw a line up Orion's belt and you follow it across the sky, this is what we call star hopping, you can find Aldebaran here, which is part of Taurus the bull. So this is the bull's head here. This is the bull's eye. And there's two stars that mark out his horns. This one's fairly bright. Uh, this one's pretty dim, but you can find it if you follow these three stars up. It's easy to find. And I know if I take my telescope or my binoculars and I look just to the right of this, I find something called M1. So let me find M1 here for us. For M1, we'll find it. Now, with binoculars, this might be kind of hard to see. What you have to do is kind of circle around really slowly in this portion and you'll see just a little hazy spot maybe uh, that seems to not be moving. That's about the best you can get with binoculars. Um, with telescope, you might get a little bit of a better view here as we go into like a binocular view. You might see the star and how it's just a little bit fuzzy. That's about a, a binocular view. With a good telescope, you might see something a little bit more like this. Um, obviously, this is like the Hubble Space Telescope getting here, but just to show you what it is, this is another cloud of dust and gas, but this isn't where stars are born. This is the leftovers from when a star died or went supernova and exploded. Um, this star exploded in 1054. It's the remnants of a supernova. We know that because ancient astronomers kept good records of when things showed up in the sky, 
And this supernova was so bright in 1054 that astronomers noted that you could see it during the day. Um, so we're pretty sure that this is that star that they were writing about. Um, and this is the remnants of it. All of that energy has gone out and excited the gas um, in the space around that star and making it glow. That's what we see there uh, in the sky, the Crab Nebula. Again, with a telescope, you might get a view kind of like this. With binoculars, you kind of have to move around a little bit, and it'll just look a little bit like a blurry star. But use this star in the point of Taurus the Bull's horn, and look just to the right of it, and you should be able to find that there. Now, one that's a little bit easier to see, but doesn't really have any close stars to look for, um, is over here. Let me back up a little bit more. There we go. Zoom in a little bit more. Over here by Leo the Lion. Now, it's in the constellation of Cancer the Crab right here, which looks like two Ys kind of stacked opposite ends of each other. But if I turn off these constellations here, you'll see the stars in Cancer the Crab are really, really faint. They're hard to see with the naked eye. Um, if you have really good eyes, you might be able to point, uh, find these and just use these stars to find it. But if not, um, you can use some brighter stars. This star Rigel, and here's that backward question mark of Leo the Lion, or sorry, Regulus. This is the star Regulus, and this is the star uh, Pollux in Gemini. And if you draw a straight line in between them, directly halfway between them is this next object called the Beehive Cluster. If I put those lines up there of Cancer again, you can see it's right here in between these two stars and Cancer. But again, these stars are so faint, you might not be able to see them and pick them out. Um, even with a pair of binoculars, it's kind of hard. So if you use this star and this star and just kind of look right in between them, just draw that line star hop there and move right, right in here, you can find what we call the Beehive Cluster or what's noted in astronomy logs is M44. So let me see if I can show you M44 here. Oh, right there in the middle of those, we'll zoom in a little bit more. And if you move your binoculars around while you're looking here, you'll see this, what we call an open cluster of stars. Um, all of these stars formed from the same cloud of gas, like the stars in that Orion Nebula. This didn't form from the Orion Nebula, but this is the later progression of that. So all these stars are gravitationally bound to each other. Um, and this one's about uh, 500 to 600 light years away from us, and maybe up to about a thousand stars in here. Really bright object to see, really easy to see in binoculars, much easier than that Crab Nebula, but a little bit harder to find because there aren't any bright stars near it. So that kind of has its own challenge. So you use those two bright stars to find in the middle of it. All right, um, and let's look one other thing we can look for. Uh, if we go back up to the north, so let's get rid of this here. And we're going to turn around, we're going to look to the north again. So we'll turn all the way around. So here's that big dipper in the sky. And we use these two pointer stars to go through, find the north star. Go about the same distance across and look for this M or W. Now you can see one of the sides is nice and pointy. The other side looks like it's kind of flattened out. On this side here, what you want to do is take your binoculars and look up above this and this other constellation. This is the constellation Perseus. It's, it's a really weird shape, so it doesn't stand out really well in the sky. The, the M shape or this W shape here is, is what's gonna stand out the easiest um, to you. And look just above it, right around in here, and there's another nice uh, open star cluster that we call the double cluster. It's listed in astronomy catalogs as NGC 869. So let's see if I can get that. Eight, six, nine, and I'll show you what this looks for. This stands out really well with a pair of binoculars. Actually, I wouldn't even recommend looking at this with a telescope because the telescope will, will show you too small of an area and you won't even realize you're looking at it really with a pair of binoculars. This stands out really well. It's called double cluster because it's two clusters of stars next to each other. Now, as I scan around, I always look for these two bright stars. It looks like a little pair of eyes staring back at you. So this is one of the star clusters. This is the other one. That's how I can kind of tell I've, I've hit the right spot. These two eyes that kind of look like it 
and up here it looks kind of like a three-eyed monster looking back at you. That's the way I look at it. And then there's two bright eyes close together, and these three eyes usually stands out in a pair of binoculars really easy. It's a really pretty group of stars up there in the sky. Um, this double cluster is about 7,500 light years away. And it, each one of these clusters is three to 400 really giant blue-white stars. So they, they stand out in the sky really, really nicely um, and are really easy to see. So those are a bunch of different things that you can go outside and try to look for. Uh, in these times when we're kind of stuck at home looking for things to do, um, night sky is, a, is an easy activity to kind of study up on during the day, look at the sky maps, things like that, see what you can go out. Um, I'm going to try to work over the next couple weeks to post some other resources and videos of activities dealing with space and the sky and telescopes and things that you might want to do while we're all uh, kind of trapped at home. So go outside, take a look at the nice uh, the night sky. And you can always check out the Planetarium website. We have some lots of resources on there. It's www.methactin.org slash planetarium. Um, lots of things on the constellations, if you like mythology, links to those sky maps, links to these videos, um, things like that. You can also reach out to me with questions. Um, be happy to answer questions and things like that in the night sky. So um, stay safe, stay healthy, and go outside and look up at the sky.